I appreciate nature, yeah. Quite often observe it. Listen, birds, and thrushes, sparrows, blackbirds, um, the parakeets, which are all around here. And obviously there's loads of pigeons and rooks and crows. Mm. And uh, the birds that are on the river. Favourite sound? <laughs> when I hear it, the cuckoo. Okay. So I only hear it uh, this time of the year. And if, oh, we don't want to get too cerebral, but it reminds me of a piece of music with the cuckoo sound in it, Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony. In the church here, there was um, a classical um, violin player with her husband, who was a piano player. They were rehearsing for a, a gig, and I managed to walk in there. They were rehearsing their whole set in the daytime. So I, and there was like maybe four or five people watching the whole thing and it was like he was on the piano, they were from Paris, he was on the piano, she was on violin and like it, it was like a free, it was just like a free gig. I'll never forget that, that was great. I'm a big reader um, and I love um, libraries because you, it's, I just think they're an amazing resource. I, I work in a college library as well um, and I think that they're, yeah, they're just fantastic really. Free access to, to books, literature, space to work somewhere, you know, warm and safe to go. Um, yeah, I think they're brilliant. I think it's, apart from a church, I think it's like the, one of the only free sheltered spaces that people can really go in and just, be, you don't even have to really read in there, you can just go and sit in there. So yeah, yeah I'm a big, big champion of them. I think it's Bushy Park and I think there's a lovely lake there and I was studying and it, it just I'm so lucky to be here it was peaceful you know it's a stone's throw from Kingston and there's so much greenery so much space there with the animals the baby ducks the baby geese and it's just beautiful and that sticks with me I'm so lucky to come here you know, I live in a flat but I'm so lucky to come here that there are a lot of like the Hong Kong people moving here too they're big Hong Kong people community. It's, it's something about the because of the political change in Hong Kong yeah. and Hong Kong people like you know like moved into UK and honestly in London, Kingston is the most welcomed area where oh. Hong Kong people like to come here. Even I know that they were some of them they have like um, um, political gathering in Richmond Park too. I feel like a lot of people are very um, judgmental on, if you're in a public space and you're being quite loud, you know, people can be quite judgmental, but apart from that, you know, you just do your own thing, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. have, do you feel people have judged you when you're in public oh, space? Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. Oh. How did you respond? Um, <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course I do. Tom <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> did it work? Yeah, of course it did. Good. I'm trying to enjoy myself, so yeah. you're not going to stop me. Stop the, the constant high-rise development, such as around the back here with the post office and all that, all the flats that are going up, they're completely characterless. I mean, I think that is real. I understand the pressures on Kingston, but they're completely changing the character of the, of the town. There used to be a big um, food market um, and a big charity shop and a big sort of strip like that that's now um, been built into flats. So we're talking like luxury apartments not not general housing <laughs> of that many people really buying these spaces I, I don't think that there is the demand for them I think it's yeah I, I think it's it's sad I think the charity shop for example was it was a really really good one that was always full of people I don't like the um, I don't like the cameras mm. I feel the cameras are very intrusive but they are needed for you know the odd thief that might want to steal someone's bag or purse or I'd like to wake up and just go to the market, grab my veg, have a coffee and go back indoors. You've not you've travelled maybe one or two minutes, that's great. It's, it's you know, having a camera watching you all the time doing it, I'd rather that not be the case, but you know, they're there and there's nothing you can do about it. I think it's a little bit over subscribing with the path per person. Mm. Yeah, because like Sometimes you can't get into, on a weekend, you can't go to the party because there's too many people. I hate litter. Interesting. hate the litter. Really find that just offensive. And um, 
very much more crammed with people and much more into fast food. Uh, I've seen that change and a lot more litter and graffiti. And it seems to have gone downhill. I feel that Kingston has gone downhill. People don't seem to take a pride in it. Like a grumpy, it sounds like a grumpy old woman. I would probably build some sort of maybe a community art space, um, something that is sheltered and warm, has toilets, um, but also some kind of creative element like a little studio where artists can dis display their works, a place that runs workshops, maybe people can learn a new skill, but it's also, it's also a warm space that people can just go and sit in as well. I feel like more youth centres. Um, I feel like the crime rate, especially in the UK and you know the areas we live in, is a lot of um, the kids don't have anything to do, so they're either creating trouble, stealing, doing drugs, or you know they've got nowhere to go. So make a youth space for them that's free and public, and watch the number. The, the crime rate will drop. Trust me. There's not enough. There's nowhere for anyone to go. I think they need they need a new swimming pool here I think and it might stop people getting in that river. I'd take down the Bentor Centre mm -hmm. and I'd create um, I'd create um, like an Eden Centre. Eden, like you know the Eden project. It's just huge, huge domes full of gardens and greenery inside and they put a few, you know, coffee shops in there. And, and Kingston's missing a lot of trees. I think it should there should be trees all over the place. Orange trees or apple trees or anything. Accessible public space. I realise that's so important mm. um, for wheelchairs, people that you know have a disability. We've actually just been to, to Richmond Park today, and there's parts that were really good, and there was parts where the paths were not really very well maintained. So it made it difficult for my husband to walk in. So yeah. Very good. It's you know along the Seine, there's always different art insulate. You know, just things that keep you going that little bit further. Oh, let's go look at the next piece. You know, yeah, that keeps your interest. Yeah, they're very, very good. And the public buildings are just so well thought through. I think that's something we kind of maybe lack a little bit here. Like where I come from, this is an, a, a, a place near Frankfurt. And we don't have this like a uh, marketplace, we don't have a city center in a way. And this is something that's terrible for a town. And I would also ask the people, like in a referendum or something, what kind of architecture they would like. They did this in Frankfurt, I don't know if you know. The old town center, there was a big space and they wanted to renovate it because it was horrible architecture. And they opted for a, a new historical approach, like making the buildings look historical although they were on a top-notch new development state and it's become so popular.